Gran Turismo 4, released in 2005, and it was a HD, system-pushing, high-variety simulation racer. Lots of different cars, tracks, races, challenges, and music, all fitted onto one DVD. One day I was reading the booklet and noticed an advert for Tourist Trophy on the back, which was also developed by Polyphony Digital. Just from looking at it, a Gran Turismo for bikes was the first thing that popped into my head, and it seemed like a strange curiosity until I happened to find it at a store. Now back then I was really into motorbikes, and I've ridden them for over a decade. Yeah, 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 I know, dirt and road bikes are different. And I'm really into Gran Turismo, so I thought this would be an interesting concept. So let's start our engines with Tourist Trophy for the PlayStation 2. Oh. Safety first. Looks like my first prediction of it being a Gran Turismo for bikes was 100% correct. Uh, well, 72.8% correct. It has the same first menu, options, game modes, tracks, even the HUD is similar. They really should have called it Gran Turismo Motorcycle Edition, but I guess it wouldn't be as catchy as Tourist Trophy. There are over 100 bikes. That's not bad. Different manufacturers including Honda, Suzuki, Yamaha, Kawasaki, Triumph, BMW, and Ducati. No, no Harley Davidson. The only problem I have is the lack of legendary bikes. Gran Turismo has loads of legendary cars that made an impact to the auto industry. Apart from a few old bikes, there really isn't any. And the only racing bikes you get are custom designed by Polyphony, with the exception of these Suzuka 8 hour ones you get near the end of the game. And they don't take much effort to obtain. Instead of using money to buy vehicles, you win them with challenge mode. In order to get bikes, you have to complete a challenge with the bike you want by overtaking your opponent or opponents and staying in front of them for 10 seconds or cross the line. Complete the challenge, the bike is yours. I also noticed if your name is too long, it doesn't show up fully on the HUD. What is this? Bone Storm on the Simpsons? When it comes to the best racing superbikes, all you do here is beat a lap time. Yes, you can get the best bike at the start of Tourist Trophy mode, but that is if you have the license. Oh man, did they have to put licenses in this game? Firstly, how does riding in a straight line 400 meters on a scooter help my riding skills? Secondly, what's the point of these stop-start tests if every race is a rolling start? Really, it is. And thirdly, when will I ever have to ride this scooter in a race? I know I don't want to. There's also a test where you have to ride through a slalom with a passenger behind. Now I understand that you need to test your balance, but there isn't a single race where you have to ride with a passenger behind, so what's the point of having a test like this? Another thing that annoys me is when you pass a test even though you get gold, the selection always starts on retry. I can guarantee you that at least 95% of gamers would select exit every time. But once you exit and reach the menu, it starts on retry again. I mean, take me to the next test already. Polyphony really wants us to redo the test. It's not just Tourist Trophy, but all the Gran Turismo games have the same problem. Huh? What? What? Oh. Okay, I got all the licenses. I never thought I'd say this, but even Daytona USA have better practice challenges than a simulation racer. Polyphony should rethink their license challenges because most gamers do it not to get better, but to get it over with, which is completely missing the point of all the license tests. Okay, let's change the riding outfit. Yes, you can change that too. And you can unlock outfits and helmets by winning races and obtaining the licenses as you saw just then. Now, what's the most colorful look? We've got the bikes on challenge mode. All right, let's race. In the Gran Turismo series up to that point, they had only five opponents on the track, which even back then sounds pretty small. But why did Polyphony have to put only three opponents on the track? And on the first set of events, there's only one opponent on the track. Not only this, but you're like 10, 20 seconds behind first place at the start. But it's not going to matter that much because this game is really easy by Gran Turismo standards. 
The only real way opponents can win is if they have a better bike or your tires wear out which leads us to the pits. Every track has a pit lane that's virtually non-existent, blocked with haystacks. Normally it's not a big deal because all the races are short, until you reach the final championship called the Special Machine Festival which is unlocked once you win the TT World Series. It's too long. If your tires wear out to the point of red, tough shit. It wasn't until I found out you can change the tire settings of your bike. There we go, hard tires. But even then they still wear out too early. Okay, I know that MotoGP riders usually don't use the pits, but I also know that races last 20 to 30 laps and have tires that don't wear out after only 10 laps. Playing the whole game, it's possible to win every single race. Barely. Another thing that pisses me off is if I accidentally go too fast around a corner and hit a barrier, it's a 10 second penalty. So cutting the corner is fine, but hitting a barrier penalizes you. What logic is that? At least the controls aren't as flawed. They're pretty good for a motorcycle racing game, probably one of the best on the PS2. How much you move the thumbstick controls the steering more, and too much or riding on the soft surface can make you fall. The controls feel more like an arcade racer than a simulation racer, but it is a lot of fun. However, just one touch of the barrier, assuming you're not hitting it straight on, on a street circuit and you immediately fall flat in your face. It's nearly as annoying as Silver Surfer on the NES. It's also like when the Star Trooper got yanked off the speed bike by Ewoks on Star Wars Episode 6. But at least if you fall off, you immediately get respawned back onto the track. You can also pull a wheelie providing you have the right bike. Just make sure you don't celebrate too early, guys. There are three different views, including the front of the bike, third person, and first person, which is pretty cool. I must say, it really does look like you're on the bike. For the record, anyone can pick up a controller and play this. Each bike is different with steering and speed, which doesn't surprise me. So it has good motorbike attention to detail with high level graphics and shitty music. You'd think there'd be no music from the soundtrack in this review to avoid copyright, but I wanted to turn it off because it's rubbish. Like seriously, just turn the in-game soundtrack off and put your own music on instead. And even if it was good, the standard volume of the music in the game is so low, you'd think there's something wrong with your PlayStation. Strange, because it's not really the case with Gran Turismo 4. So to sum up, it's a much more scaled down version of Gran Turismo 4. There are less race events, not as many bikes compared to cars, no endurance events, no pits, and less vehicles on the track. The game has sold close to 700,000 copies. When you combine the average number of copies sold in the Gran Turismo main series, that's pathetic. I can't say I'm surprised because the back of the Gran Turismo 4 booklet was really the only form of advertising it got. Not to mention, the PlayStation 3 came out the same year as this. If I'm not mistaken, only 16% of gamers read the booklet. Yeah, it's not a very scientific number, is it? Really, only Gran Turismo fans know about Tourist Trophy, and most are only into cars, not motorbikes. What they should have done was get the license for MotoGP, then it would have sold millions. And we all know Polyphony Digital can get big name licenses such as NASCAR and World Rally Championship on Gran Turismo 5. This would have also been an opportunity to have dirt bike racing with motocross and supercross tracks too. I mean if Motor Racer can do it, why not Tourist Trophy? There was so much potential in this game that could have been utilized and it's a shame that a developer like Polyphony didn't take advantage of it. Hopefully when they make another Gran Turismo game, there'll be like a sequel and or reboot to Tourist Trophy with all these things. But in the meantime, 7 out of 10 is my rating. There are lots of things they took out which made me scratch my helmet. But the riding controls are good, the graphics push the PlayStation 2's limits, it's in HD, and it's well made. There's just not that much to do apart from the race events which are pretty easy if you select the correct bike but you'll definitely enjoy it enough to want to complete every single one. It's certainly worth having in your PlayStation 2 collection. Even today on eBay, you can get a copy in good condition for less than $10, even though this game sold less than Conker's Bad Fur Day. Just saying. 
What Sony should do is release it on the PlayStation Store. Either that or give us a sequel. What are we waiting for?